Hey, now, everybody, it's show 209. If you know, you know. I miss section 209. Let's go. Cowards. Hey, oh, I'm telling you. Hey now, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Pucknologist, the only completely live, unfiltered, unedited, uncensored, commercial-free Sharks podcast, wrapping up your week in Sharks hockey, part of Teal Town, USA. Remember, if this is your first time checking out our cast, remember to like and subscribe on the platform of your choice and leave your takes in the comment section if you cannot be with us here live. And uh, remember, we're giving out prizes, so um, pay attention. That's all I'm saying. Pay attention. You can find us on all those social media platforms. And hey, we might even just give away a prize there. So who knows? So let's go. I needed that two-week break. For any of you who heard our show two weeks ago, you could tell. I needed that break. I, uh, I, I embarrassed the hell out of myself two weeks ago. I showed my ass in a big goddamn way. And so I want to apologize to our audience for that. Uh, I also want to give a big apology to Hockey Jerk for that. Uh, I made both of us, more so myself, but both of us look really, really bad last week. Or I should say two weeks ago. That's also why you can't find the show on YouTube right now. <laughs> because... Hey, man, like First <laughs> Amendment, bro. <laughs> uh, no, so I apologize for that. Uh, and apologies to you, Jerk. Hey, that's cool. They call it the past because you've moved past it. There you go. I love that shirt, by the way. Oh, I know, right? I feel I feel like you might have seen it in person. Uh, there is a possibility. I don't want to. I don't want to get into too much inside baseball. There's a possibility it's hanging up in my closet. <laughs> All right. So, uh, boy. Three games this week, and uh, of course, in typical Sharks fashion, they lose. Both losses come by the way of one goal, and of course, in so Sharks fashion, with what thirteen seconds left. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess at least they made it interesting. Maybe. <laughs> well, dude, considering I, the tickets that I had for last night were free, I was like, "Yep, got what I paid for." Yeah, I, I, I mean. I, I think you could argue that it was a thriller. Uh, That's true. You know, um, Just down 3-1. Yeah, of course. But down 3-1, the Sharks battle back. You know, that's always thrilling, no matter the uh, no matter the full-scale marching orders. Um, and shout out to the Sharks. Uh, if they were going to squander the moment, they did it in regulation, which was the right time to do it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so and to answer your... To answer your... To them. Yes. To answer your question, Ricky... Uh, one drink felt like 10 after uh, some heart medication, and so I made a fool of myself two weeks ago. I was very obnoxious, and so that's that's what that was about. And 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 now we move on. So, I mean, dude, why does the Sharks hate Kakinen? Yeah, no kidding. Dude, and, and, and 80 shots over two games? I know. And, and the fact that he's kind of appeared to settle into a groove, right? I mean... <laughs> trade, lines, not... <laughs> trade deadline's coming. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, two weeks from this Friday, so, you know, tick-tock on the clock, but, uh, you know, a 974 against the Jets and then the old Blue Jackets there, a, uh, what did he have against the Blue Jackets? 902, which, I mean, you know, could be a little bit better, but, again, I thought he's been very, very good uh, since the calendars flipped over to 2024. And I think his safe percentage is reflective of that. The fact that, uh, you know, you remember a couple weeks ago, it was pretty critical. And uh, now all of a sudden he's got a 905 on a pretty crappy team. <laughs> what? Dude. I mean, the, the stats are rolling by right now. I mean, look at Blackwood, dude. Four, he hasn't lost in regulation in the last five. A 942? Are you kidding? And then look at poor Cack over here. <laughs> one, three, and one. And I, but a 923 safe, I, like, I wouldn't blame any of that shit on him. I don't blame it on any of the goalies, to be, tru to be totally truthful with you. I mean, they may come to, up in the heroes this week. Right. I mean, to the point now, this week was kind of goofy, right? I feel like <laughs> I feel like we saw everything. We saw a chess match. Mm -hmm. We saw a blowout. We saw a 
last minute uh, collapse. You know, I I feel like if you wanted to explain to somebody the nuance of how hockey games can go, I kind of feel like this was the week to do it. You know, you get a little bit of everything. Dude, so much. Uh, And then, of course, we also get the injury bug going, but we'll we'll get to that momentarily. Uh, I mean, the Winnipeg game... Dude, total chess match. That is not what I expected. Yeah, um, no kidding. Plus, it's a it's it's kind of a fluky goal that bl- you know that glances off Baron. I wouldn't exactly say that Winnipeg you know was playing with their food by any stretch. No, not at all. But dude, being outshot by a two to one margin is again like you're not going to win a lot of games if you're just going to sit there and consistently give up thirty eight, thirty nine, forty shots a game. And you're hanging out your goalie to dry. It's it's not a recipe for success. Uh, but I mean, if if you were doing your best to try to make Kakinen look good for the deadline, I mean, mission accomplished. <laughs> they knew the assignment, as they say. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, <laughs> then they go to Calgary. Who look? Come on. Uh, I I think if the. Uh, if the season is a hundred games, I think uh, Calgary might be racing the Sharks for the bottom. <laughs> that's that's kind of what it feels like. I, they, <sighs> they, despite sort of everything, right? It, it it doesn't seem like they're able to get any footing. Uh, it it feels like they're on, they're off. Huberdo is the MVP of that team. Huberdo is a pigeon on that team. Like <laughs> there's there's no consistency and. You know, we talked a little bit about like some of the other teams, but Calgary, especially, like they're they're running out of racetrack pretty quickly. What's the quote again? There's a lot of quotes. Which one? It's the one where it's like you know, it's not too late, but it's you know, it's damn close. I can't remember. <laughs> I Eric knows it. Which um, one is Eric? That's uh, you know that puck guy dude. <laughs> puck guy. <laughs> But, uh, dude, so what, Zadina pissed off at me and says, oh, four points, bitch, watch this. Well, he like, said Remember he's... when EK embarrassed your ass last year, AJ? Watch this. Well, and, and you know, he, uh, obviously, we didn't do the podcast last week because there were no games to talk about. Yeah. And that, I kind of think, was the the perfect cocktail, if you will, because Zadina says, man, like, Fuck AJ. The first, the first Sunday in forever that I don't have to listen to this dumb idiot yell at me, <laughs> and you know I can kind of get my head on straight. And then you know what does he do? I believe in that game against Calgary, he had four points, which yeah. he even at the the apex of his short NHL career, he's never done that. And you know when you're feeling it, you're feeling it, right? I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to run before we walk here, but you know it, it's kind of hard to think of somebody else to be a hero based on what we've seen well you know what the bad you you want the okay i'm going to give you good news and bad news sure at least for zadina the good news is you play calgary two more times the bad news is both (laughs) those games are after the trade deadline (laughs) yeah i you know i do wonder with zadina like just because of the fact that he's a restricted free agent i do wonder if they let that like see how that one plays out You know, Uh, what do you mean? The just in the sense of like, you know, we're not going to trade you. And if you play well, we'll unless someone comes with an overpay. Sure, 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 sure. But like, you know, we're not going to trade you. We're just going to play out the season. And if you play well enough, we'll resign you. And if you don't, we'll just let you go. And, you know, they the only thing it costs the Sharks to get him is money. You know, no assets were spent. So it's not really a loss if they do end up having to let him go. Mm-hmm. Yes, Ramon. <clears throat> yes, we will. <laughs> uh, okay. So th- the other thing I think is kind of notable, it's like, wait a minute. Did they remember how to like kill penalties again? I mean, they were perfect this week. I was going to say, sure seems that way. Dude, nine for nine. And I believe, yeah, looking at the notes, and this is in typical fashion. And in fact, we're going to get into this in a little bit. Dude, every game this week, the Sharks had to kill more penalties than they played, you know, than they had on the power play. (laughs) Seems to be something that was a regular occurrence this season after I ran the numbers. 
Uh, finally, last night, you get that heartbreaker. Uh, well, really, was it? <laughs> uh, it would have been a heartbreaking loss if it had gone to overtime because you're like, fuck, we didn't need that point. Right. So, dude, LeBanc finally gets in after being scratched for eight. Uh, Zadina did get a bit of a promotion. And uh, I can tell you already, tomorrow against Vegas, uh, Barabanov getting the demotion. Yeah, I Oof. believe it. Uh, and then the Cali Finn jerseys debuted. And so that makes the fourth jersey now that the Sharks have never won in. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and do we know for sure, has it been confirmed uh, whether or not they're going to, you know, ride out the Cali Finn the rest of the year? Do we know that for sure? Uh, no, I think it's uh, all of February and all of March, but the game's in April, no. Yeah, what all three of them? Like, <laughs> no, no, no. There's uh, one, two, four. So there's a uh, six. <sighs> Man, that's not not my not my April. You you remember you remember when the regular season ended the first week of April, first weekend rather of April? Yeah. Oh, is this this can't be right? The last game of the season's April 18th. Yeah, dude. Good then, God, did we start late or something? Well, here's the other thing. You know, just because of how the NHL operates. The playoffs are not starting until the 23rd or 24th. Fuck's sakes. And so, you know, there was all, you remember all the dialogue of like, well, you know, we just need to weather the storm with COVID and then we'll get the season back on track. And <laughs> I feel like the opposites happen. Oh, dude. And then it's such weird scheduling quirks over this, uh, like the last few weeks. And then this week, dude, they play tomorrow and then don't play until Saturday. Like, honestly, though, fuck? be be honest with me. How upset are you about that? Oh no, no, no! I mean, <laughs> but it, but if it, you know, if it could have gone into like meaning that the season ended on like I don't know April fifth. Sure, that's fair. Right. Well, even then, like if you and and I'm sure either coming up or earlier in the season, you know, I'm I'm sure there's an explanation for this. But even if you if you look at the schedule, like it, it seems as you know the Sharks they played on. Um, they played on the 31st against the Ducks, right? And then they had the All-Star break, and then they had the bye week, and it almost seems like they had a second bye week. <laughs> exactly. You know, and 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 usually it's like, okay, so you're going to get five days from the All-Star break, and you're going to get five days from the bye week, and so, you know, 10 total. And the Sharks got 14. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really know what happened there, but I'm also not upset about it, if you catch my feeling. No. Not at all. But and then they come back. They have to play three and four nights, and then they play two in six nights. Like what the shit? <laughs> it's just really weird. And then next week, the you know the following week, it's four games. In the it's it's a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and you know what that means. Our favorite no. time. Boo! <laughs> Boo this man! Boo this oh, man! Take over time, baby. But you know what? It gets us on the air earlier. I was going to say, I'm looking, you got four Pacific against the Wild, three Pacific against the Blackhawks, and three Pacific against the Coyotes. Don't hear so... you booing now. No, I'm okay with that. I can live with it, I suppose. I figured. Uh, I suppose. <laughs> did, uh, <laughs> so LeBanc gets back in after missing eight no. straight, only got like ten and a half ice time. Did he do anything to help himself? I kind of feel like. And if you read Curtis Pashalka's article in the Who? Merc, in the Merc, you know this. We love Pashalka. We do. The only one of the beat writers to give me my flowers on, on air. So. Oh, true. <laughs> uh, it, it, <laughs> if at any point this season it was in doubt, all doubt was eliminated when Pashelka's article came out. Uh, basically. <laughs> Saying what LeBanc, we've been saying for like ever, what everybody's been saying forever, like yeah, LeBanc knows, and I think you have it written down to talk about, but he knows, like it, you know, there's no delusions of like, oh, maybe if I do this, I can reset. Like, no, no. it's over, it's, it's over, over, Johnny, it's over. <laughs> yeah, and 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 what a what a really kind of unfortunate set of circumstances, right? <laughs> we'll always have game seven. Yeah, I but even then, like we'll we'll have that whole season I thought was, you know, like the you know, the two seasons before that, you know, there was like a nice build right there, you know. 
And then that season was awesome. Game seven was awesome. The following season, there was a lot of expectations and a little bit of a speed wobble, but it's COVID. So, okay, whatever. And then there was a major speed wobble. And then there's a season ending shoulder injury. And so it's just, it's all, you know, somebody's going to, you know, not anybody notable, but somebody's going to do a write up on it. And uh, I'd be really curious to track that whole, I guess, progress, if you will. Oh, dude. It'll be interesting to see if he can uh, figure out something on another team. You know? Well, and, and and you've been kind of saying all along, like, you know, it, it, it's pretty much an open secret that this will be his last season on the Sharks. And I'm, I, I think you agree with me. I'm, I'm kind of wondering if this is his last season in the NHL. I mean, it the wouldn't. Sk- the skill is there, but the way things are going right now, teams don't really have a lot of runway to tinker, you know? Yeah, but he was so ridiculously overpaid during this contract. Sure. And I'm thinking he knows that. And I hope so. You would think, <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you this, 31 other teams know it. Self-awareness, man, is 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 the biggest thing you can have. Yeah, so I, it wouldn't surprise me if someone – does you know maybe a two-year flyer on him to see if he can get his head on straight and it's like look here's a show me deal <clears throat> you know it's going to be two mil a year for two years and uh that's the you know and even ian saying maybe somebody takes him at league minimum i mean of course i think somebody would definitely take him at league minimum but it's god does this poor son of a bitch sign like a one-year league minimum deal to like try to prove it yeah, I think that's going to be his only option. I'll be totally honest with you, because, like, and I kind of mentioned it a couple of minutes ago, but, and we might have even talked about it a couple of weeks ago. How wide open the playoff picture is right now, especially in the Eastern Conference. Like, you have to be on your game every single night. Like, there's nobody who's just walking into the playoffs. You know what I mean? And so. I, I don't doubt that a team will give LeBanc a chance just to see what happens, right? But at the same time, if you're in a, a, a battle to make the playoffs, do you really want to give yourself 10 to 20 games of trying to see if a guy is a fit? Or would you rather just go with what you know, you know? Mm-hmm. Now, do you, do you think anybody is possibly knocking on on the door for this guy at the deadline? Because they're only going to have to sure. pay him. If it's prorated, it's only, what, a mil? Uh, Yeah, I, there's... Let me see. I'll tell you how much they owe him. Um, <laughs> and with Chris saying, no such thing as overpaid. Teams aren't giving you extra when you outperform. That's true. That's true. So maybe I should have said the return on investment has been shit. That's fair. So according to, according to Cap Friendly, his remaining cap hit for the season is just over 1.4... Uh, million, and so you kind of. So in a couple of weeks, it'll be real close to a mil. Well, and, and not only that, but it, it uh, his cap hit is actually lower than his salary he's being paid this year. So it might be a little bit higher. But to your point, it's not going to cost a lot of real dollars, and you know the Sharks will retain salary on this, or at the very least, they should, and. With just one spot open? Who cares? What else are they going to retain on? I agree with you, but I do know that that's been a thing that like keeps popping up. It's like, oh, he's got to he's got to use that one space, you know, carefully. And I'm like, I'm, I'm in, uh, dude. Here's, I'm with you. I'm like, I'm like, it's well, all coming off the books in two months anyway. Who cares? I, I, I was, yeah, I was going to say, well, <clears throat> you know, once July first hits, that one spot will open up again for one. Uh, for two, of all the trade potential guys, Kevin LeBanc's cap hit is the highest. So it would make sense mm-hmm. that you would retain on the highest guy. Now, that said, you know. And to, what's that going to gonna be? A half a mil. Right. And and that's the thing. You take, you know, his his salary is, it's like five, his actual like real dollars salary this year is like $5.8 million. And, you know, I think he's still owed maybe 25% of that, maybe 20% of that. And then you divide that number in half. So it's really not that big of a number, uh, just in terms of real dollars. And, you know, you kind of just do it and deal with it. But at the same time, 
maybe there's a team out there that says, oh, no, we don't care. We can fit the whole thing, whatever. Well, so, who knows? Well, and to me, it's, you know, it's a win-win. It's, it, yeah. <laughs> well, but, I mean, it's if he gets moved at the deadline, it's a win for the Sharks. It's a win for him. It's like, all right, look, the, obviously it hasn't been working. So you get a new uh, a new look. Grass is greener over there. Have a great time. Best wishes. Good luck. And the Sharks Don't get... Don't ever call me again. <laughs> get, you know, the Sharks open up the spot. They get free up that cash. And, you know, or it's... I mean, look. Well, dude, who's my favorite player? Cap Space. Cap Space. That's there my favorite go. player. So that's, you know, that's the win-win. And then if he doesn't get moved at the deadline, it's a win because it's like, well, hey, since, you know, now that Zadina and Duclair and whoever else is gone, we have a little space for you if you can, like, <laughs> figure out how to play again. Yeah. So. Later, later idiot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the uh, Cali Finn jerseys now you've seen them in a game? Dude, they're, they're choice, man. Is this they your, really are. Is this your favorite alt or... You're kind of like, uh, it's a Ugh. close second. <sighs> I'm going to have to chew on that one, but uh, gun to my head, yeah, it's probably my favorite alternate jersey. See, I'm still going to go with the very first one, very first black one. I mean, that's, but again, is there a wrong answer? I don't think so. Yeah, well, it's, it's like, oh, you never forget your first. Sure. Uh, no, I would say there is a wrong answer, Stealth. If Stealth is your favorite alt, no, I think that's a wrong answer. Well, um, certainly yeah, was I, the one that lasted the least out of the three, sure. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude, huh. it was like, we hardly knew you. I mean, dude, they debuted it. And then what was it like the next year it got retired for reverse retro and heritage. Yeah, they no, they had stealth for, they had it for two years and then it was on a hiatus for reverse retro and heritage. And then it came back. And then, and then it was, it was on a hiatus, and then it was on a hiatus again for Reverse Retro Two. So it was it was an official <laughs> it was an official jersey for five seasons, but was only worn for three of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. How bizarre, dude. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Maybe you're maybe you're onto something. I mean, <laughs> favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But bad? No, I don't. Think oh so. no, not bad. Just definitely not like you know. There are four jerseys, and that one for me is number four. That's fair. You know, I mean, just because somebody, somebody's got to be last, right? Yeah, exactly. And I would say, you know, for me, it's the first one. Never forget your first. Then I would say the uh, the Cali Finn would be my second, and then Black Armor's third. And I and I like Black Armor just simply because uh, it was the first jersey to ever feature something other than the usual shark logo. Since, I, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I, eh, at least that was different. I don't disagree, but I also feel like Black Armor. I kind of feel like Black Armor really kind of waned over time in terms of how awesome I thought it was. Well, you know what I think? It's funny. We're making fun that that stealth we hardly knew you. I, <laughs> I almost feel like Black Armor was like, you know, can we move on already? You know, like yeah, Black have... Armor stuck around far too long. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it overstayed its welcome. All right. So let's move on to some other stuff. Uh, you know, it's only three games after two weeks off. So there's a few things that happened, of course. Uh, Gavanki's contract gets terminated. He was uh, acquired from the Jets for Artemi Kinejov. I knew I was going to get that wrong <laughs> because it's always Kinejov, Kinejov. <laughs> at, at least they got rid of one of them so, to make my life a little easier, right? So uh, he signed a one-year, two-way contract uh, with Gavanki. Clear the Sharks have 48 out of a possible 50 contracts. And the Barracuda right now have seven other defensemen. So you got Shimmick, also uh, recently new captain of the Cuda. Yeah. The aforementioned Kinejov. You have uh, mm -hmm. Muka Madulin, who was just recently sent back down prior to the All-Star game. Of course, almost not even making it on the first night. Poor right. bastard. Uh, Valtteri Pulley. I'm, mm -hmm. Am I getting, did I even come close to saying that correctly? Yep, you're good. All right. Gannon LaRock, and hasn't LaRock had like injury issues like all fucking year? I uh, barely yeah, heard the guy's he, name. He's only played 16 games between Jesus. the Barracuda and Wichita. My God. He, and also, once the Sharks injury considerations clear up a bit, uh, Thrun will be back there. Uh, true. 
Uh, Frisch and Guryev. Uh, but PTOs were extended this past week to Keone Teixeira and Cody Haskinen. We'll see if any of those stick. But boy, how funny is that? That uh, if it didn't it feel like last summer? It's like we have nine defensemen. We only have six. Where are all these guys going? And now there's a couple <laughs> guys on the Cuda. I'm like, who? <laughs> 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 no <you>. shit. Dude. <laughs> and then who's come back from injured reserve since the break? And it's like Granlin's back, Ferraro's back, and then you're like, and oh fuck. So Hurdle's gone. Likely that they're not gonna say it, you know, likely for the season. I I think that I mean, tell me I'm wrong, but we're two we're literally two months to the day to the season being over. Why would you bring him back early at all? Yeah, I would be I, I mean, just especially in Couture's case, to be hurt most of the year and then come back and be hurt again, like, don't even bother, right? Uh, With Hurdle, I you know, I kind of feel like because it's in his left knee, people were sort of freaking out. But <laughs> from dude, what I understand... how long did you harp on, you're like, oh, but his knee, but his knee. And you're like, bitch, that was five years ago. <laughs> right. And, and, and that's the thing. Like, the... The knee has not been a consideration for four years right now, or I should say up to this point. And as far and you know, somebody who's had knee surgery, Chris being one of them, can maybe speak to this. I don't know that like cleaning out, like cleaning out loose cartilage. I don't know that that's some big life altering procedure. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't believe it to be. Hmm. And, you know, Chris, I, I, like I said, I believe Chris has had knee surgery, so I think he could be able to speak to that. Yeah, big time. But, yeah, I, dude, I'm just kind of like, hurdle, couture, enjoy the time off. Brother, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any logs I can borrow? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, couture says week to week. And, I mean, good God, what a roller coaster this has been. You, you know, misses half the season. There's talk, it's like he's, like, dealing with will I ever play hockey again to right. – coming back and goes out there is throwing the fucking body. Ian making a good point too about, um, about hurdle where it's like you could play through it, but what's the point, you know? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, with that, I just, I sit there and go, just, just, just take it easy, chief. Get, get, you know, don't rush back. There's nothing to rush back for. I understand. Like nobody's more angry about this than couture. But mm -hmm. it's like, dude, think of how long it took you to get back, and you, and he played what three games, right? So it's like, brother, take just take this fucking season off. This is just going to be an opportunity for the younger guys, especially once the deadline occurs, and hopefully the Sharks have some more space to like see, give some guys some chances, and see what they can do. Yeah. Um. Again, LeBanc sounds, you know, he's resigned to the obvious. This is his last season in Teal. Um. But the other interesting report that came out, I can't remember if it was Pashelka or not, probably was, but basically saying no one is safe, including Couture. Now, I'd bet that the lone exception is Eklund, unless Greer has suffered a recent puck to the head. You know? <laughs> right. But, and see, and then we talked about buying out LeBlanc, LeBanc. I mean, dude, would Greer actually eat salary with two buyouts on the books already to ship off Couture, especially while Vlasic is still here? <laughs> I I mean, it's it's the same thing. This is kind of a cop-out answer, but it's the same thing uh, as I said with Timo Meyer and with Eric Carlson is it depends on the uh, it depends on the roadmap. If this mm. is a quick turnaround, you know, maybe you just eat the cost of not retaining salary, so to speak, and move on like they did with Brent Burns to a lesser degree. I mean, you know, they could have retained more, you know. Uh, if this is going to take a while, sure, do all 50%, whatever. <laughs> well, my other thing is, you know, <laughs> say Couture comes along and says, you know, I, I gave it, I gave it the college try, whatever. I ch but I'm, you know, I'm looking. I'm reading the tea leaves. I just don't see it happening for the Sharks in the next three seasons. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe we can work on find, you know, helping my brother out like you try, you know, the, like you did with Marlo, like you did with Carlson, right. like you did with Burns. Yeah. Help a brother out. However, those 31 other teams are going, uh, let, can we talk about your groin again? Right. <laughs> Before we consider bringing you over here? So, to, and then the other thing, dude, how much, I'm a, how much do you think Hurdle regrets signing that fat extension? I mean, you obviously. Oh, I don't think do- he. Re- I don't think he regrets it at all because, dude, money get, get paid, right? <laughs> yeah, but maybe, maybe he regrets the term. Uh, maybe, but even then, I mean, if, if if say the Sharks do trade him, he's still going to get paid the same. Man, but how? God, what does that do for the Sharks though? If Hurdle is gone. That's it. Like, you know, that we we talked about earlier in this season, right? The uh, the remnants from the last playoff run, right? Dude. And it's we mentioned LeBanc out the door. Hurdle maybe out the door. Vlasic should be out the door. Psh, That's it. Man. In in 5 years, a playoff run team has been toppled. Uh, dude. Like considerably so, and uh, you know, I really, uh, I can't wait to do the show here. And what is it like three weeks for the deadline? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <It's gonna> be, <laughs> dude, that might have to be one of those ones where we just like it's a Teal Town Live, fired up, let's go. <laughs> Man, that's gonna be uh, interesting. So, I, you know, we're just gonna have to, uh, you know, wait and see and just hope that look. The guys that, I mean, let's be honest, Duclair, Grand, well, fuck, like half this team is on what is on an expiring deal. So just hope that they all do well. And look, you, you got this. Uh, you got four more home games, but obviously Vegas. That, mm. but then Nashville. Then you get the return of Timo Meyer if he actually plays. <laughs> You know, and then you get Anaheim. So, I mean, there's, if these guys can figure it out between now and the seventh, I don't know. You think somebody comes, uh, okay, you know what? Well, maybe this needs to be a bet between us. Do you think, um, you think a shark is moved between now and the end of the month? Mm, I, yes, I could see it because as, as Ian pointed out in the chat, I mean, for different reasons, obviously the writing's on the wall with this team. Like there's no, Oh, we'll see where we're at, where we're at when the time comes kind of thing. Like the sharks should be in the mode of, Hey, if someone's going to call, we're going to answer. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I, I don't want to say yes, definitively, but if a trade went down between now and March 1st, I'm certainly not going to sit and say, wow, that was early. You know, (laughs) Oh, who do you, you think it is? Oh, man. Like, who do you think is the first one to go? I would say probably LeBanc, just because it sounds like things are already being worked on behind the scenes. Solid pull. Yeah. But I maybe could, not. Uh, you know, there's also a part of me is just kind of like, are they going to have to like hold, retain some salary to like get Hoffman out of here? Maybe. I mean, he's been brutal this week. Dude. <clears throat> Or this, I mean, really this month, let's be honest. You know, but... I mean, there could be a lot of people that sit there and go, oh, LeBanc, Barabanoff, Grandland or something. You know what? I'm I'm going to go, uh, my dark horse is cunning. Well, I don't know, dude. He 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 had the uh, he had the A on his jersey the last. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Like, it's almost games. kind of a, uh, like, look at this guy. He's wearing an A. <laughs> mm, okay. That's an interesting thought. Right? He has leadership ability. And he had a pretty good game against Calgary. Sure. So, I don't know. It's going to be fun. It's going to be real fun. Again, something that we'll be able to talk about real hard in a couple of weeks. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. But as Chris is saying right now, Sharks legend has really fallen off. Yes, it has, sir. <laughs> so the bloom is off the rose. <laughs> so, back to the um, to the jersey thing for a second. I just thought this was so damn funny. Aesthetics, shout out. Uh, our buddies at Aesthetics did a video this last week, and it's the top 10 best 
NHL jerseys with zero wins. The Sharks came in third place in a three-way tie with themselves. <laughs> Can you believe this? That's so, so unfortunate. Dude, and the fucked up thing is two out of three of these jerseys are fucking gorgeous. I think some people will still hem and haw about the stadium. I mean, dude, the stadium one, I remember. It's grown on me. Exactly. Me too. But I remember people fucking hating it when it first dropped. <laughs> and yeah. I, I, like, I wasn't a huge fan. I, did, I don't know that I hated it. I may have, but. It's definitely grown on me, and it's definitely a jersey that, man, do you not see those being worn at games? They're, you don't see them, man. They're few and far between. But, dude, these other ones, this reverse retro 1.0, that, that's one when it came out, I liked it, and I think I like it even more now. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And then, you know, dude, the Heritage is chef's kiss. Best jersey in all, in, in all the NHL. But... At least for now, we can add Cali Finn to that list. <laughs> so in four jerseys, four different jerseys, the Sharks are a combined 0, 11, and 2 after you count last night. Huge. <laughs> but yes, the Heritage 25th. I should, I should, that's okay, that's on me. Let's, context is key. Not the Heritage 30th, but the Heritage 25th. Oddly enough, the season that they went to the fucking cup final, <laughs> they went oh three and two in those twenty fifth anniversary heritage ones, but I just got a real kick out of that where they came in a three third place in a three way tie with themselves. I mean, dude, to have three different jerseys and that you didn't even you never fucking won in. Oh my god, that is a that is a sharks <laughs> stat if I've ever heard one. I'm telling you, so sharks, dude. Oh, um, and I mentioned it earlier about uh, the penalty kill. Looked in some numbers, and I think I heard about this. Uh, they mentioned it on NHL radio. Uh, did, did you know like the Sharks have gotten about 24, 25 less power plays than their opponent this season? And I like, what the fuck does that tell you? Like, guys aren't working hard enough? Something? I, I mean, it tells, it tells me a lot of things, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but like, here's the, it, it's the same thing with, uh, with McDavid, but kind of the opposite, where people always make the point with McDavid of like, he's so good, how is he not drawing more penalties, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like with the Sharks, it's the exact, op exact opposite. They are so terrible, there is no scenario where somebody is going to you know cause an infraction against them because they're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah oh dude perfect point <laughs> i mean right like <laughs> dude, that's that's perfect and i went through and, and ran the numbers it's like the shark how many games have the sharks gotten less power play chances than their opponent Th it was 32 last after last night call it 33 games where the sharks have gotten no power plays five and then how many games have the sharks gotten more power play chances than their opponent 10 <laughs> So, dude, I'm telling you, just just an interesting thing to, you know, maybe a mental flag, mental note to keep in the back of your mind when you're watching uh, how the rest of the season falls out. Uh, just kind of like, did they even, was that a battle that they could f win? <laughs> Good <laughs> God. How much does Nico Sturm want out of here? Anyway, um, dude, that, uh, I got to say after this week, that EK65 pick is uh it's looking pretty decent. Last time I looked, 12th by points, right? Where you want to be, babe? 15th by percentage, but 12th by points. Oh, yeah. baby. I mean, well, I mean, dream scenario is that thing tumbles down to 11th. Yeah. Um, but dude, but if they can just if they can just like maintain 500 hockey. If they could just I mean, if they could just miss the playoffs. Yeah. Because you again that we, effectively I think, would do it, right, right, and and we've broken it down so many times before. But like, with whether that pick from the Penguins, if it's fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, or it's eleventh, like you you can get a quality player at that slot, or you can trade for a quality player. That's a long term solution, right? Hell yeah. And I I am kind of wondering if. 
perchance it makes more sense for the Penguins to make the playoffs because if this year is the last hurrah, mm, defer. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like this, they empty the tank this year and barely make it, and then next year is just terrible, and you know, get a nice pick. Oh man, Good. but you talk you talk about running before you walk, right? Yeah. Oh, dude, in a <laughs> like, huge way. And the the other thing that I was looking at for the numbers that I was just like, good lord, the Sharks' goal differential at, after all of last season was dash eighty seven. Sure. And the funny thing it was like after forty one after the halfway mark, it was dash ninety three, and then eleven games later, it was still dash ninety three. <laughs> <laughs> but again, after the Calgary game and everything, okay, so now it's dash ninety, but still, oof, ah. good god. Just another thing, like, I I think at one point we we might even, I think we were considering throwing a bet, like, would they hit 100? I, do, I have faith. I think they'll do it. <laughs> I mean, dude, no hurdle, no couture. Although, for whatever reason, Vlasic is suddenly a fucking scoring machine. Uh, yeah. But anyway. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get to the hero and zero. Oh, speaking of which, all right, dude, I gotta say it, dude. My say it. my hero, Mark Edward fucking Vlasic, bro. <laughs> Since game forty two, the halfway point, Chief has potted five goals, averaged a half a point a game. He's a plus two and has zero pims. Dude, shooting percentage seventeen point nine <laughs> for Mark fucking Vlasic, dude. Oh, that get, that gets you the hero spot in my book, man. But I'm but I will have uh I'm definitely going to have a um honorable mention. But who's your uh, sure. who's your hero? So my hero, and this one's an easy one, but my hero is Philip Zadina just because of how how much the both of us have like completely bodied him this season and then for him to play Calgary, which we've talked about Calgary is not the best team this year, but they seem to be a formidable opponent for the Sharks. And so for Zadina to go in and put up four points against them, two goals, two assists, like I think that alone has earned the honors uh, for the week. And also, I just I want him to keep it going, man. Like I, I, I you know, just objectively, I like the player and I want him to figure it out to where he resigns and can be part of the solution. Uh, I thought you were going to be like, so yeah, Zadina for like stuffing AJ in his locker. <laughs> well, that's that's the cherry on top, man. I'm sure, of course. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> but dude, that's that's. I just I can't believe how that's worked for him this week. It was that was that was a fucking game, bro. So. <laughs> I mean, my on the hero shout out this week. It's uh, it's going to be Jan Ruda so, again. Since game forty two, three goals, three assists, plus three, and then of course the goalie tandem. I mean, dude, look at those numbers that are scrolling along the top, man. I mean, their last five games they have played well, facing an onslaught of rubber. Yeah, I I mean it, it seems like the first time in a while that there's actually been multiple options, right? I mean, how many how many weeks have we just wanted to say nobody? Because, <sighs> or how many weeks have we had the same answer? Mm -hmm. And and I think you could make a case for like the bottom six this week, whether it's Cunning, Bailey, Duclair, whoever. Yeah, I, I, I would support that. Yeah, um, for, but the zero, I mean, we mentioned it early, like Mike Hoffman. Dude, you had one shot over two games. You only had 10 minutes of ice time against Calgary. Like, what happened? You were the guy that every time you came to a team that hadn't made the playoffs the year before, all of a sudden, they made it. Not this season. And you certainly aren't, like, helping your cause as the deadline quickly approaches. Uh, who's yours? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Do I it. Don't wanna, do it. I don't I don't want to do it. Do it. I know we don't besmirch that name in this house, but you got to do it. I, it's going to be William Eklund again. Oh. Like damn. 
you're you're the crown jewel of this franchise and you're playing the in the top six. Like we need more from you. Yeah. Like now that said, do I expect him to go on, you know, do I expect him to be like some of these other players in the league and, you know, be on pace for 90 points uh, as a 22 year old? No, of course not. Because that's, you know, not everybody gets to that point. Right. But man, I would have expected him. I mean, half a point per game is not terrible, but you know, I would have liked him to be flirting with 20 goals. Oh, and he's only time. got and he's only got eight. So you're right. And and it's not to say that he's been bad. It's more just to say like, please do more. You know, and I know he's not always been like a goal scorer kind of guy, but <laughs> I still think he should be able to get 20, especially playing on this team, like as high as he's been in the lineup pretty much all year. Hell yeah. And it's not like he's been saddled with, you know, really horrible guys. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been, I, I would have to, I'm going to take a look here, but just from my, like, my recollection, he spent most of the year with Hurdle and Eklund, who are having good offensive seasons, right? Hold on, Hurdle um, and Eklund? I'm sorry, Hurdle and Zetterlin. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so most common line combinations, Barabanov, Hurdle, Eklund, Eklund Hurdle Zetterlin, Eklund Hurdle Zadina. I mean, he, <laughs> he's he, like, we're giving he's, you the tools, pal. Make some fucking say, comedy. His top, his top three, his top three line trios have all been centered by Hurdle and <laughs> Ian. You dude. know, he, and he's been with Zetterlin <laughs> as well. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Keep taking his goals away. <laughs> and 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 he he's had a nice little burst lately, right? I I don't want to disparage him too much, but brother, like. We kind of need you to be driving the boat here. Well, and another guy who has become a passenger, this is an, another shout out or honorable mention, dishonorable, if you will. Dude, sure. Barabanov. God. Dude, it since, sucks, doesn't it? Dude, 13 games played since the halfway point, and he's got all of two assists, dash three. And it's like, oh, come on, buddy. Like you, he should be good for, I mean, what, 15, 15 goals a season? Mm, yeah, somewhere between 10 and 15. Yeah. So, and it's like, like three. Yeah. It's like, come on, Chief. You, but you're... I, I, here's the thing, though. I think with Barabanov, what's more telling, you know, you mentioned the goals, but what we've seen in the NHL, which, you know, three seasons. So people are going to say things about that. But, he he has a pattern of thirty plus assists, right? Mm -hmm. And he's got and he's got six. Yeah, it's like what what the hell happened this season? I mean, I'm I'm starting to kind of, you know, you look at it year over year, and it's like guy can't stay healthy. Yeah, <laughs> still he's better bit... than Sue Miller. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that trade is still an objective win, but you know, considering Sue Miller, you know is barely was barely hanging around in the AHL with the Marlies. And now he's been in Europe the last two years, admittedly playing very well in Europe, but mm -hmm. in Europe, nonetheless, well, and sleepy saying, you know, maybe he's playing with an injury. Well, if that's the case, get off the fucking ice. Yeah. Don't play them. Uh, or just keep doing what you're doing. If you, if, if, if you don't want to be traded and if you just want to help this team increase the odds for the number one pick, then just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, literally caught a lot of the blame for the collapse last night in the final seconds against Columbus. Yeah. So. Which, again, is unfortunate just because of how much, you know, we like the player. Absolutely. So um, what are your thoughts on the um, – oh, dude. Oh, Chris throwing out some fighting words. Bear Van off shades of vodka. Ooh. <laughs> I, see, uh, I, but I liked Barabanov. I would never liked Bodker. Yeah, well, and 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 not only that, but Bodker in however many seasons he was here, two se in in two seasons that Bodker was here, too too long. <laughs> his his best season, just not in terms of points, but in in terms of like points per game, his best season was not as good as Barabanov's worst. <laughs> so, nice I, I get what you're trying to do but <laughs> guillotine not, for you sir <laughs> not falling for it 
Uh, so what were your thoughts of the, uh, thoughts about the, uh, the the break and everything? The All-Star game, the, you know, whether it was AHL, NHL, just over the two weeks that we had off. We're not obviously not going to bring up the fucking Super Bowl, but Super Bowl. I you know what the the break was the break was really nice. It was nice to kind of get a mental recharge and I know like don't get me wrong, like the Sharks they're my team. But watching them is exhausting. I was going to say, dude, and like really if if we could build in that two week window every season around this time. <laughs> well, and and as I mentioned, you know, it wasn't like this wasn't a conventional time off. You know, normally it's Normally it's four or five days for the All Star break plus the five day bye week. The Sharks had fourteen days off. Yeah, that's... so it was like it, it was as if they knew that we were kind of losing our minds a little bit, and they said, "You know what? We're gonna help those guys out." <laughs> Fucking a, dude. <laughs> Did you catch any of the outdoor stuff? I made some money on some of the outdoor stuff. <laughs> Ooh. So uh, there we had a. I'm gonna share the story because I think it's a fun little story. Yeah, whip it out. So so our our buddy. Uh, member of the site if you will uh marky mark uh so he he threw a little ditty on on x and was saying hey uh you know i'm at the uh i'm at the game right i'm at the stadium series game and and for those who don't know and they actually made it a series this year there were four teams involved in the stadium series at the same stadium so it was actually a series and they dude like this is like the first time i think they've done it correctly right and so, uh, you know, Mark throws the thing, hey, you know, Rangers Islanders, like, let's get after it kind of thing. And so I send him a note. I say, Mark, the people want the people want to pick you. The Mark bump is in is in is in favor. You know, the people need a pick. And he fired back and he said, Zabanajad to score and over five and a half goals. Now, if you if you look at the stat sheet. Zabanajad, not only did he score, he had the goal that tied the game with 89 seconds left. So, you know, better late than never on that one, right? Sure. Over five and a half goals, the game had 11. So we <laughs> cleared it. <laughs> cleared it. So, you know, the Mark bump was in full effect there. Wanted to give a shout out. Oh, dude. And, uh, you know, just for that, uh, what, are we, we going to have to uh, get some credentials for this guy next uh, next All-Star? I you might have to. You might, uh, you might have to. Here's here's the other thing. We're, we're talking about bumps, and I know you know what I'm talking about. You mentioned you don't <laughs> you, – you said you don't want to talk about it, but I have to mention it just because we're on the subject. Yeah, whip it out. How about your friend and mine – how about Jawan Jennings in the Super Bowl? Dude. Dude, that Dude. that was <laughs> your, <laughs> your, your tweet was just like just cash and checks, baby. <laughs> Dude, that was and, and and that was that was nice. I had you hitting me up. I had Ryan hitting me up. It was like, you know, I felt good about that one. And so that's you know Dude, that was one you like walking a little taller, dick feels a little bigger, swinging around the room, you know, you're like, yeah, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't, you know, you can't underestimate the, uh, you know, you can't underestimate a gut feeling. You know oh, what I mean, dude? And solid and, pick. Yeah, and and you know, going back, if you bring it back a couple weeks, you know, the AJ bump with the Vince Dunn shots, like. Oh yeah. I'm just saying, sometimes you just feel something, and you got to see. You know. It happens. It happens. <laughs> um. So this just came through, so you're going to have to forgive me. I'm going to have to uh, bring this graphic in on the fly. Sure. But uh, I just saw our our buddies over at uh, Aesthetics call this out, and I was like, oh, good God. So if you'll just indulge me, pardon me for one minute, but evidently the, uh, the Penguins jersey to, from earlier tonight, not looking that great because of what they had to do. So, uh, <laughs> if you can witness this, there's oh our my God. there's our boy Carlson. <laughs> but dude, so in order to fit the Yager patch on there, since his uh, his numbers was retired today, right? Yep. So look, they had to move the advertising patch to the right arm. <laughs> that looks fucking horrible. Hey, dude. you know what? <sighs> at least at least they moved the correct patch. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But good God, like why, like you couldn't have worn your other jersey? 
Well, I, I think the idea was they wanted to wear a jersey that oh, Yager was associated. Had worn, yeah. All right. That makes which, sense. Shout out to them for that. Yeah. Well, then, you know what? It's one of those ones that, hey, you know what? Maybe for one game, we can forego the hideous looking advertising patch. Right. What, you know, what do you say, guys? <laughs> God, give me a break. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? I mean, and, and they're, if I'm not mistaken, they're advertising it. It's Blue Cross Blue Shield, is it not? Yeah. So, what do you think is going to make them more money? on a given night, the blue cross blue shield sponsorship or merchandise sales from all the Yager gear. They undoubtedly had. Exactly. I'm just saying, you know, you, 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 you take a step back to take three forward, right? Yeah. I mean, you look at all the merch that they sold for Marlo and you can see, dude, we're still a season away from jumbo retiring or I'm sorry, from having his number retired and they already got a ton of, ton of merch available. So Hey, hey, hey. Um, what do you think about Phil Kessel meeting with the Canucks, dude? Is that a fit? Because, dude, he could be the twelfth player in NHL history to win four cups with three different teams. So I, I love it for two reasons. Number one, it's it's yet another, you know, piece to the evidence pile that the Canucks are all in this year, which I'm absolutely loving. And dude um, was not on my bingo card last September, dude. I, I do feel I will be totally honest. I do feel a little sad for Bo Horvat that you know <laughs> he gets he gets traded away and the Canucks are having their best season in 15 years. But <sighs> you know whatever life goes on, he got paid and is obviously very happy being on the Islanders. So whatever. But I wouldn't say other... 15 years. They went to the final in 2011. Yeah, sure. Of course they. But I, I more mean like statistically. Oh, statistically. I got you. Like, remember they were ripping off presidents' trophies every year. Yeah, uh, and yeah, which, just never get it done in the playoffs. Right, and and you know there, you know, you could have a whole conversation about the the value of those presidents' trophies when you know it was them, <laughs> it was them and four non-playoff teams in the division. But no, oh, <laughs> dude, or the value of a presidents' trophy when you get knocked out in six in the first round. Well, that's like, but I mean specifically with the Canucks. Right. Like, you know, they were in a division back in the day. You remember this. They were in a division with Calgary, Colorado, Edmonton and Minnesota. Four teams that sucked when Vancouver was at their heyday. So, well, it's it's similar to the Niners for like, you know, 15 years when they would just every year beat up on Atlanta, New Orleans, Carolina and L.A. Right. And so and so that's the thing, you know, the Canucks, they win they win five divisional titles in a row with, you know, and and out of the out of those five years, you know, uh, 20 other opportunities, you know, four teams, five years, 20 opportunities for another team to make the playoffs. Only three of them made it. So you have the Canucks beating up on everybody in their division every year. And then it was like, oh, San Jose, boom, you're out. Chicago, boom, you're out. Detroit, boom, you're out, you know? So it was just a real kind of interesting year. But anyway, back to the point. So I love Vancouver being all in. I also love the fit for Phil Kessel. And and I don't think this is would be disparaging, but the where Fizzle, Phil Kessel is at this point, like he's still got the skill, but it's kind of the motor has dwindled a bit. And so he's kind of morphed into a clean up the garbage. I'm gonna be there with my stick down kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And you look at the Canucks, I mean, JT Miller, Elias Pettersson, they brought in Elias Lindholm, they have Brock Besser, like, uh, these are all guys who can and are happy to do 98% of the work. And all Phil needs to do is just put his stick down and honestly, like, his well rested stick. And that's the thing, even if he signs, like, even if he signs right at the trade deadline and only has maybe 17 games left, it wouldn't surprise me if he had 10 goals. I'll be totally honest with you. Dude. So he could, uh, you know, potentially join former Sharks legend Claude Lemieux. Uh, Joe Newendike and Mark Recchi also, guys, have four cups with three different teams. So I'm, I'm kind of rooting for this to win or for this to happen. You know, I, I, and, and it really irks me because the Canucks really pissed me off in 2011 because they're so fucking entitled. Well, you, you know what's interesting about just, I, and I think this speaks to how long we've been fans of this team, fans of this sport, but like you, you have a team in your head, right? Where it's like, you know, for the longest time it was 
Dallas, right? And then it was Calgary, and then it was Vancouver, and then it was LA, where as a Sharks fan, you just, you hate these teams. You just hate, hate, hate. And even seeing their logo, you just want to throw up, right? And then time goes on, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah those those Canucks, they're, they're a real wagon. I hope they get it done, you know? <laughs> and it, it's just interesting how things can evolve. And, and that's not to say that that same vibe won't be there for Vegas in a few years. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But I do think Oof. it's interesting how you know, decade to decade, like the bloodthirstiness kind of goes away. Well, you know what though? I think a lot of that also, it, it doesn't have to do so much with the, with the crest on the Jersey. It, the thing that did it for me was the entitlement of the fans that I would hear on Vancouver sports radio. Like it was just nauseating. <laughs> sure. Uh, but the, the other thing though, is that they had a couple guys that just were very punchable. Uh, dude, sure. Alexander Burroughs. Oh, that fucking guy. Wasn't he the one, the biter? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. So, like, they just, they had a couple play, And I was, I, you know, I was so fucking tired of hearing about the Sedins. But Burroughs was a douche. I can't remember the other guy. And, Ryan Kessler. Yeah, Kessler. Uh, not a big Edler fan either. Um, but the, the Oh, God, that's the one. Fucking Bieksa. You know, it's funny. I like him on post game, or I like, <laughs> you know, I like him now. Sure. But uh, yeah, back then I was like, oh, fuck that guy. And I feel like Vegas is the same for me. Like, as long as March or so is on this team, I'm like, fuck those guys. <laughs> but after he's gone, and then after five, six, eight years pass or whatever, then I might be like, ah, you know, fucking Vegas. They're not that bad. Right. But we'll see. Anyway. Well, and, and, and kind of, and I think this is a, I think this is a sign of maturity and a sign of being, you know, uh, well-rounded as a fan is so, you know, I have some, uh, you know, some, some friends and some, uh, if you will say acquired family members, if you will, <laughs> um, you know, obviously super jacked last year when Vegas won the cup and, Obviously, I wish it was the Sharks winning the cup, but, you know, I look at these people and I say, hey, I'm happy you're happy. Sure. You know? So. <laughs> Be sad, I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, Ryan in the uh, chat, we're, we're going to get to this in a second, but I just love this comment. It says, I'm betting the NHL jerseys will become billboards in about a decade. But will it matter because all those ads will be heat pressed and fall off by the second period? That's a good point. You know? Uh, all right. So, <laughs> dude, Toronto's Morgan Riley has been suspended for five games for cross-checking cross Ridley Gregg, um, a player from Ottawa. For the record, it's a place called Ottawa. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so, too much, not enough, just right? I think it was just right. As and do I. There's a lot of Maple Leafs fans and commentators who are <laughs> Steve Dink. screaming bloody murder over this. And, and, and here's the thing. Hold up. Screaming bloody murder over the length? The length and the fact that it was even a suspension. Oh my uh, god! Now, now here's the thing. Just you, you look at the whole situation. So Ridley Gregg takes a slap shot into an empty net from five feet out. Now, if you're on the Maple Leafs and you want to be pissed off about that, by all means. I think if I was on the Maple Leafs and somebody pulled a maneuver like that, I think I would be pissed off too. So I, I, I don't fault anybody for being pissed off. But to then say, you know what? I'm so pissed off. I'm going to cross-check this guy in the side of the head. There's no defense for that. And the weird thing is, is that Morgan Riley is not known for being this kind of a guy. Like Tom Wilson, sure, I could see this. Right. But Morgan Riley? Yeah, no, that's very off-brand for Morgan Riley. And so I, I again, be pissed. Hate it. I'm, I'm all in favor. But... To to say to see a cross check in the side of the head and say, oh yeah, you had it coming, like no, like there's just no scenario where that's okay or makes sense. And you know, I did love, uh, <laughs> I I did love. I don't know if you saw, but the night afterwards, uh, the Ottawa Senators, in in true villain fashion, you know, I love a good villain. They went on Twitter, 
posted a picture of the empty net goal and said, Ridley Gregg took a slap shot into an empty net to secure the victory and earn the performer of the game honor. So I love Ottawa steering into the villain role on this one moment. And I don't doubt that it pissed off a lot of Maple Leafs fans who were, who, as I said, are screaming bloody murder. I, I just, I don't get, to me, I look at it kind of similar to a bat flip mm-hmm. in, in baseball, you know, when you jack the, uh, the game winning home run or whatever, and then you do the huge fucking bat flip. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Just like a slap. Sh- it just, I don't know. It It's the whole thing of like, you know, the NHL, they have no, players have no personality. They aren't allowed to do, and then when they do shit, they get shit on. Mm-hmm. Whether it's Zegras doing Michigans or you got Greg doing fucking, you know, slappers into the net. Like there are, there are bigger things to be pissed off about, but let's take it a step further. Well- yeah, I am curious your thoughts on this one on one thing though. Yeah. And and I I cannot take credit for this. I did read someone else say it, but I think it makes total sense. Why like why is Ridley Gregg why is he expected to have composure and have decorum and not take a slap shot into an empty net? But Morgan Riley doesn't need to have composure or decorum when he's cross-checking someone in the side of the head. That's such a perfect point. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, but let let's take it a step further. Let's uh, for those of you I don't know who who's all seen this, but we have to show it. Um, I mean, like here are some ideas for the next empty netter that comes Greg's way. I mean, the I think this one is better. You almost had it where you just come right up to the line, stop for a second, wait for the defender, then tap it in. Or celebrating before you decide to bang it home. Or I should say, tap it home. The five ball corner (laughs) pocket is a favorite in a big way. (laughs) But then the canoe ride, I go, nah, nah. You know, personality, yes, but nah, didn't look as cool. Uh, The fake clapper to a Michigan, uh, okay, It's, it's got some personality to it. The moonwalk, I'm nah. Not for me. It, cute, but no. I mean, Michael Jackson's been dead for how long? But, dude, the... Oh, man, whoever... The guys who did that, whoever put that together, I mean, <laughs> stick taps to you, man. That is hysterical. I love a great video. But <laughs> the, the other thing that um, came from this, which was kind of fun, is The Athletic did an article about the unwritten rules. So mm-hmm. I just, uh, I just, oh, and then Felix is bringing up uh, this whole gritty cell. What the fuck is a gritty? So it, it's a, it's a, it's a dance move. And so where it, is it, where is it, it really? Yeah. <laughs> so here's where it comes from. And again, speaking to being, uh, in enjoying the villain role, right? So, uh, last season. And this is like wild, the fact that this story exists. Last season, Jake Waldman, who's a defenseman for the Detroit Red Wings, scored a game winning goal to, you got to bear with me, scored a game winning goal to seal a comeback for his team, a comeback victory, and then did this gritty dance as a goal celebration. And it was a goal that scored against Casey DeSmith. Fast forward to uh, a week and a half ago, Jake Wallman scores a game-winning goal on Casey DeSmith to seal the comeback victory for his team and hits the gritty again. So the fact that the same player in the same game situation has scored a game-winning goal on the same goalie twice and then hit the gritty, it does make me wonder if there's some bad blood there. (laughs) But also, I as somebody who enjoys the villain role and, 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 and enjoys fun, I thought it was awesome. And then, so the NHL comes in and basically sends a whole thing. Oh yeah. Hey, uh, you know, just letting you know, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be monitoring. This is, they sent a warning, uh, <sighs> to the Red Wings and other players about 
that and excessive celebrations. And, and, and it's to your point of like, do we want to be more fun or do we want to, you know, make everybody be just boring? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, don't sit there and bitch that, you know, you're not growing the game, you know, or, or shouldn't say bitch, but don't sit there. Oh yeah. About growing the game or whatever. When you consistently, consistently don't allow players to have personality or when they show it off, you kind of say, Oh, you don't, you know, that's not the type of shit you did. I mean, we, we all haven't forgotten the hurdle shit. Funnily enough, we were talking about Vancouver, but hurdle scores the four goals does the, you know, between the legs, top shelf. And what, what happened? You got guys like Adam Oates coming out and oh, it's disrespectful and blah, blah, blah. And uh, then in Vancouver for the next game, uh, thankfully, you know, Thornton comes along and tells, you know, guys to to shut up. And we know, of course, the rest of that story. But it's just like, can, can we just have a little fun here? And we talked about the NFL earlier. You you make a single play and it's like you could be down twenty points. You make a single decent play where you not you bat the ball away and you running down to the fucking end zone to take a photo with the other guys on the defense. I love that. I, see, I, you know what? If that happens with, the, like, if you knocked away what could have been a pass to extend a drive that could potentially win the game. Like if you do that and you've, you know, or you've gotten the turnover that sealed it, that you win the game, then I'm all for it. Sure. Celebrate it. But I'm sorry. It looks really fucking bad when you're going, you're running down, taking photos. It's five minutes into the game. You've made one play and you're already down seven, nothing. And you end up losing it like 42 to 10. And it's like, yeah, remember five minutes into these idiots were at the end zone, you know, doing some choreographed bullshit. Perhaps they should have spent that time, I don't know, playing defense. I'm just kind of in the camp of like, Who don't, gives poli- a shit? don't police fun. Okay, I'll give you that. Uh, but some of these unwritten rules, um, th- this just cracks me up. It says, uh, you know, no showing up the other team when the game is decided. And of course, they mentioned the Tomash Hurdle thing. Wow! Exactly. I'm like, give me a break. Um, now that that said, the the Hurdle example, the Greg example, the Jake Wallman example. If you're gonna pull a maneuver like that, and then somebody from the other team wants to fight you, I think I'm not saying that you have to fight, but I think you should be prepared. To. Absolutely. But, but again. But, but again, I don't think we should be policing fun. Absolutely. But then again, we're also talking about a league that now you you <laughs> level a good, solid check on somebody, and you have to answer the bell for that. Right. Like, to me, that's uh, – give me a fucking break. Although uh, I will tell I will tell you this. <laughs> I, wish the, I wish the Sharks overreacted like that because <laughs> – the, the the last few years, we've talked about it, there's been a pattern of not stepping up when they need to. Absolutely. Uh, stay on your own side of the ice during pregame warm-up. Absolutely. But but again, or what? <laughs> Prepare to answer the bell, motherfucker. <laughs> like, if, if it was such a big deal, write it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, dude, the... Um, yeah, oh, and what's funny, immediate or unwritten rule number eight on here. A big hit, even a clean one, calls for an immediate fight. Fuck you. Like, only, if it's the, dirty, abso fucking lootly. I was gonna say the only time that I the only situations that I think there's a place for unwritten rules is when it has to do with player safety. Well, and I'm a little surprised that we don't see more uh kind of day after reviews like you know what this guy needs to get fined or this guy because that shouldn't have had like almost like fining guys for going after somebody who who like it was a minor hit you know but because it was on mcdavid 
oh, let's go fucking, you know, beat the shit out of that guy. And it's like, he, he was playing hockey. <laughs> right. Like, give me a break. I, I did see it, though. Uh, I got an email. Was it earlier today or yesterday? I did see that Bennington got fined five grand. I'm like, oh, finally that bitch gets called for something. <laughs> um, oh, I like unwritten rule number 14. When somebody shoots the puck over the glass, everyone has to stop and wave their arms around like first graders who realize they have to go potty. <laughs> That one is just funny. <laughs> um, yeah, do not under any circumstance step on the logo. Fuck off. Then don't put it on the carpet. <laughs> right. That's, I, it's like, don't a, look in yourself in a mirror. Like, isn't that what it's for? There's, I don't remember what team it is, but there is one NHL team. They put their logo on the ceiling. Yep. I think it was, was that Montreal? Might have been. Uh, I, I want to say the Islanders, but I don't know. It was somebody. Yeah. Oh, see, and I hate this one that Chris is mentioning. Don't run up the score. Fuck you. Then don't allow me to score. Right. <laughs> you know, goes both ways. Yeah. Uh, un like I said, unwritten rules are stupid unless it has to do with player safety, I think. Uh, unwritten rule. Any almost anything goes when it comes to trash talk, but keep families out of it. Absolutely. If anything, just mm, like, no. Yeah. It's, it's like... It, keep it uh you know keep it like hockey related yeah or just keep it mature i guess to, well but aren't those two ideas diametrically opposed mature trash talk <laughs> sure <laughs> it's like jumbo shrimp <laughs> Mil <laughs> military intelligence <laughs> um so anyway yeah i got a kick out of uh some of those so i wanted to share those and any hoodles um Let's, oh man. All right. Tweet. We, this is going to be fun. We actually have tweets of the week, not just a tweet, tweets of the week. There's a lot to get into here. So this list that you see here of, of potential names and whatnot, this was an article that resurfaced the, uh, from, I, I believe the 1819 season or something that says here. Uh, you know, this is the, those stupid clickbait articles that it's predicting what the team will look like in five years. You'll notice that there are like two people still on this team, and or, for now, for now, I was going to say, and one of them is gone in two months. Or no, I'm sorry, Hurdle and Couture are on here, but Blank. like, uh, and and Ferraro and Vlasic, but y you get my point. Like there's so like, dude, Chekovic is you know playing in Europe. I'm I'm assuming, correct. He's so, I'm not even paying in the KHL. I was gonna say I'm not. I don't even pay attention to where most of these guys are. But you know, Kane obviously with the Oilers playing on the third line more often than not lately. Chekovic in the K, as you said, your tanking is is he somewhere? Yes, he is. Good for him. He, yeah, he's. In the KHL as well. All right. Blickfeld, Europe? Blickfeld, I, last I checked, he was in the, I thought he was in the Swiss League. <laughs> uh, no, the Swedish Hockey League, sorry. Okay. Still Europe. Gambrell, I forgot. What, where, is he part of the Carolina organization at this point? Uh, ooh. Uh, no, he's on the Toronto Marlies. <laughs> yeah, okay. John, John Leonard. Is he that, like, I don't even know who Nashville's, like, uh, you know, AHL, ECHL team is. Well, here's the, but here's the thing. He's not even on Nashville anymore. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, he's playing for the Tucson Roadrunners. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, so he gone. Uh, Shemilevsky. Now he's with, he's with Ufa in the KHL. Ufa. Uh, but to, to be fair, uh, Sasha, his rights are still owned by the Sharks, though. Yes? Correct. Okay. Uh, then Noah Gregor with the Maple Leafs. For now, yeah. Yeah. Timo with, with Jersey. <laughs> so you only have Hurdle, Couture, and LeBanc still on the team at, from this forward group. And, you know, Hurdle and Couture are out seemingly for the rest of this season. And who knows how many more games LeBanc is going to get scratched. So my point being, what a horrible fucking prediction <laughs> this was. Well, and we already talked about Kanijev traded, Merkley traded, Burns traded, Carlson traded, and then... Kozanash and, and, and Kozanash traded Jones. Uh, they Bought didn't out. trade him, right? Bought out. Bought, yeah, that was a buyout. So it's just like, 
good God. like i'm sorry but i understand you gotta try to make give people something to read but fuck all man all this does is make you look like you know nothing well and and now it's widely known that the articles from this particular outlet you know i, I i've been very sus of them for years mm-hmm. and what really tipped me off to it And I want to say it was 2017, maybe 2018. Um, The the uh, where are the sharks in five years article came out and they had Julius Bergman uh, on the on on the middle pair for the sharks, which whatever, (laughs) except when you consider that he was a healthy scratch for the Barracuda. So. You're a healthy scratch for the Barracuda, but you're going to be middle pair NHL in five years or less. Like, <laughs> Figure it out. I, I don't know. Oh, dear Lord. All right. Uh, another tweet, or at least social media. Um, stick taps to Kathy, who I saw in the chat earlier, but tagging me on this post by Glenn Davis. Do, oops, wrong one. We'll get to that one in a minute. Uh, but some old logos from, dude, this is from the San Jose Mercury in 1991. And these are, uh, it says that, you know, the artist credit, but evidently after the Sharks, uh, or after they had the contest to name the team and it was decided Sharks was it, I guess there was some sort of like drawing contest or something or whatever. But, dude, some of these are hysterical. But there's a couple on here, and I'm going, you know, I th- I think a couple of these things inspired some logos that they actually ended up using. But either way, I just, I got to, is, is there any one of these that you're kind of like, you know, like, oh, I would have been interested to see them use that as like a secondary logo or something. Yeah, dude, the the one uh it looks like it's number looks like it's number 13 uh where it says sharks and the fin is the letter A. That's kind of cool. W- with the water underneath? Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah, that's another one that I was digging, but either way, I uh and then Ian saying the same thing, put that on a hat and I'm buying it yesterday. Dude, this is uh this is really it was just a real cool kind of um you know, memory lane kind of thing. Um, and Chris, no, they the uh, article we were talking about came from uh, Hockey News. All right, finally, tweet of the week. This is uh, this is going to take a minute, so bear with me. Uh, Twitter exploded this week, if you didn't know, because f- <laughs> Major League Baseball pitchers, catchers, spring training has evidently begun. And the new jerseys that the ball players are wearing evidently are awful. And as you can see, it's getting a lot of media attention, SF Gate writing about it, more than a few videos on YouTube about it, including a friend of the show, Brody Brazil, doing a couple of videos about because Brody does a video about everything, let's be honest, it's sports related. But oh my Atlanta. And the thing that gets me about this, dude, what is this going to mean for the NHL when Fanatics takes over this summer? Because Fanatics has been making, uh, manufacturing baseball jerseys since 2019. They did, from what I understand, they, you know, used the same process as the previous guy. They bought out Majestic and continued the same process, which is the same plan they have in place for the NHL jerseys. They're going to use the exact same factory, the same people that Adidas used for the next couple of seasons. And then there's going to be a point when they decide to change something, just like they've done here with Major League Baseball. And... Like, I thought technology was supposed to advance, right? Things are supposed to get better. We have refrigerators that tell you when you're out of something. We have robots that vacuum our floors. We have self-driving cars. But somehow screen printing and whatnot has become the Achilles heel of forward momentum. 
Look at my jerseys, okay? Or actually, let's start with a shirt. Here's a starter shirt. As you can see, Reveal the Teal. This is from 1994. This is a 30-year-old shirt. Not, not a single thing has flaked off on this print. Now, the color has certainly faded after hundreds and hundreds of washes. I think there's probably a small hole somewhere around the neck. Oh, yeah, right, right in here. There's like a little hole. But it's a 30-year-old fucking shirt. But I can still wear it today because the printing is still there and everything. I bet you if I ran this through like a, uh, what's the, the OxyClean bath, I wonder if some of the color would come back into this, to be honest. But you look at that 30-year-old shirt. How is it 30 years later the printing has gotten worse? Then, I have a Giants jersey here, right? This is a replica jersey. And I don't know if you can see this. There was a name on the back of this. But Giants jerseys typically, at least at that point, didn't have names on the back. And I'll be quite honest with you, the name on the back of this, I wasn't a fan of. <laughs> So we took that off, but I sat there with a seam ripper taking the threads out to make sure it was clean if I wanted to put something else on here. But I had to sit here with the seam ripper and this is a replica and it was still stitched on. And have a look at this jersey. Pretty nice, right? Decent. You'll notice a couple things. It does say Mitchell and Ness, but there's no NFL shield here. You want to know why? This came from China and yet still stitched, stitched, all of this stitched. And they're expecting us to pay these ridiculous, ridiculous and exorbitant prices for jerseys that like the quality keeps going down. Like, what's your threshold, jerk? Like, at what point are you just like, I'm just not buying this shit anymore? Well, I'll be totally honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of already there for you know, <laughs> non fanatics related reasons. Um, but based on everything we've seen, is I mean, based on everything we've seen with like other fanatics products, right? And then obviously with the major league baseball jerseys coming in as well. Like anybody who had a dash of optimism, I I don't think it's going to be there for much longer. And well, that's why it's really unfortunate. Cause to your point, like it feels like the, I mean, yes, quality, you know, in terms of um, putting the item together, you know, manufacturing, if you will. Um, but also just like care and attention, after it's been made, you know? Oh, dude. And this is the thing that really gets me is I, I like, I'm worried that the NHL is going to go through the same thing in a couple of years. They're going to tweak these jerseys. Cause remember for the next two years, teams are not allowed to introduce new jerseys, right? Cause they want to get everything in place. The, the process all set up for the next two seasons to make all the current jerseys that are around now which makes me think you know because I, I know there were some people who are like why the fuck are like the sharks and and the lightning coming out with jerseys so late in the season and it's kind of like makes you wonder i wonder if those were were supposed to come out next season you know what i mean but they like had to bump it because they didn't want to wait three years maybe so you have like hmm i wonder if that's an issue but Dude, I'm just wondering, like, three years from now, once Fanatics tries to st start changing things, it's just like, oh, God, can you imagine? And I'm wondering, are we, we're, I mean, we're already seeing blowback from Major League Baseball players where they're quoted as saying, you know, they look cheap, they don't fit right, the colors aren't correct. It just, bleh, they're not well, digging it. And here's the unfortunate thing is, is this has been a longstanding issue. If you recall... Uh, the first year, the first year that um, 
Adidas did the jerseys for the NHL, which was 2017, 2018. Uh, Adidas also did the, you know, depending on who you ask, it has a different name. Some call it the rinkside gear. Some call it the center ice gear or the authentic pro gear. It depends on who you ask. But basically the sort of, you know, quarter zips and T-shirts and dry fit shirts that the players wear before and after the game, right? Mm -hmm. And that was only the first year of Adidas. And then the second year of Adidas and going forward, which is 18, 19 and everything after, Fanatics started doing the, again, rinkside gear, center ice, authentic pro, whatever you want to call it. And I'm not going to say anybody names, but there were a couple people in high places who had said to me, hey, you know, there are some, there are some high, well, paid individuals who are required to wear this gear nudge nudge wink wink who don't like it mm. and miss the adidas stuff well you've already got the major league baseball players screaming about this stuff i wonder if this if these jerseys will end up being worn on opening day we saw it back in 2000 what seven when Edge 1.0 came out and it's, oh, this brand new technology, moisture wicking and blah, blah, blah. And then the player said, yeah, great. Now all the water is in our gloves. And they quickly change shit up. I wonder if that happens with Major League Baseball. But again, I also wonder what is going to happen after a couple of years. Because I can almost, like, this is a decent business plan if you think about it, where it's like, the first couple of seasons, they do everything the same. The only thing that's different, right, is the logo on the back of the neck changes from the three lines to the F. Then after two seasons, everybody, oh, see? See, there was nothing to worry about. Everything is fine. And then that third season, they go to make changes and, you know, logos start fucking falling off or they're upside down or numbers are inverted or whatever. Or that, you know, or I shouldn't say that, but it's like, the sizing doesn't, you know, the players, it's not fitting them like it used to or whatever. Or if they do it, or if they sit there as a cost saving measure, like, so we're not making size 56 anymore. Everything's 58. So you, some of you guys either have to bulk up or some of you might have to lose a couple pounds. Could you imagine? The sad thing is, yes, I could. <laughs> You're right. Okay, let's let's move on, but that's definitely something to put a pin in. Ooh, Barracuda. So things are a little bit better for the Barracuda, I suppose. Three and one over their last four, but still remain in the Pacific Division cellar. Last time I looked, uh, I think there were eight points out of a playoff spot, but I haven't checked today. Uh, but I, I think we can all agree our expectations were high. What the fuck happened? Uh, well, you can find out if you listen to a show from Ian and Jules, who broke down the Barracuda during the All-Star break, so make sure you go check that out. Uh, and again, they did, however, name Shimmick captain over this last week, so booyah, go check that out. Find out what's going on with the Barracuda. Oh, man, what did we do for the prize you know, we took we took a week off. I've already fucking forgotten how they were supposed to win. So <laughs> did we do we one? <laughs> did, we we did do one, but I kind of am wondering if maybe it's something we just kind of lock away. Uh, it's uh, so the question was closest without going over. What will be the total points in the Super Bowl? Mm. A and there were two people who sent in responses. Two. Two. Wow, we have no football fans watching this podcast. One of them was uh, Cameron, who won the Shakir Ice Time giveaway, which is the one right before it. <laughs> and the other person who entered, which was the winner, <laughs> is Jim Reynolds. Oh, boy. fuck you, Jimmy. You're not going <laughs> twice, buddy. <laughs> so I kind of think that giveaway, I kind of think we just like lock it away and just pretend like it never happened. All right. Sorry, Jimmy. You, the, dude, I'll, I'll buy you a beer at the next fucking game. <laughs> I'll see you next Saturday. That Am I going to that on the 24th? Yeah, yeah. I'll see you next Saturday, dude. Um, all right, so I'm feeling a little well, froggy. Well, okay, I was going to ask you this. So Send it. Because we're not doing... We, because we're not awarding a prize, 
do we maybe do an instant winner? Oh, do you, do you have something in mind? No. <laughs> okay, then then no. We took a week off. Just fucking, we're going to flush it. Maybe we'll do two next week. Um, okay. So I was feeling a little froggy during the off time. And so I came up with a fucking diabolical, just, <laughs> dude, like this one's going to bake everybody noodle. Strap in, listen up. And you know what? I'm even going to allow this this time, one time only, because there are only two games this week and because one of them starts in, like, what, 15 hours? Yeah, thereabouts. <laughs> the, there's not a lot of time to get in. So I'm going to allow late entries. We're going okay. to take this up as long as you enter before the puck drops against Nashville. So next Saturday. However, you're not going to like this question. <laughs> Here we go. You need to submit the highest time on ice total in the second period out of both games and all teams. Figure that out. Now, obviously, it's going to be a shark. It has to be. Now, it's good, you know, because I say all teams, but it's like, well, wait a minute. It's one team playing twice and then the other team only playing once, so it doesn't make any sense. But my point being is that you have to get the highest time on ice total in the second period without going over, and it's a combination of both of those games. And if... Huh. Okay, so let me see if I got this right. Yep. So between the Golden Knights, the Predators, and the Sharks twice... Of those four groupings, what play? What will be the highest second period ice time? Uh, yes. So, so figure right. that out. Okay. No, so, I'm with you. I got you. Yeah. So, or, or actually, you know what? I don't think I phrased it correctly because it's it's not. So it's not combined, right? Because that that doesn't make any sense. But it's out of those, you know, out of those matches. Sec, you know, who do you think, you know, do you think that March or so is going to have the highest second period time on ice in that game? And do you think that'll be more than a shark or a predator in the second period of their game? Right? So you've got three teams to choose from highest second period time on ice. If you get so, the, go ahead. So what are you guessing? Are you guessing the ice time or are you guessing the player? No, you're guessing the ice time. Highest without going over. So if you just, you could submit, say, you know, 6.32. Sure. Right? Let's just say 6.32. Now, go ahead. Submit your number, highest without going over. If you're feeling froggy, submit the number that's required. If you also submit the name, and you're high, you know, you're closest without going over and you get the name right, we're going to throw a little something special in that box for the winner. I'm so just basically, saying. so basically between maybe a little, maybe a little NorCal pin or something. <gasps> so basically between the two games against Vegas and against Nashville, what will the highest ice time for a player be in the second period? And your, Choice is open to any of the teams playing in one of these two games. Yep. Just it's okay. been, there's going to be two games played. And when you take all of the numbers of time on ice in the second period, there will be a number at the very top, you know, that is the highest. Mm -hmm. That's that's the number you're looking for. So it could be. It could be a, a, a Vegas player. It could be a shark player. It could be a predator player. And you just want to know what the time is. What the time is. But if you want to do extra credit, if you want a little something special in the box, add a player in there too. And if you get them right, boom. So say, for example, just so the folks understand. So the Sharks play Vegas and they play Nashville this week. So say say I'm thinking about it and I say, okay, I think Roman Yossi is going to, you know, between between Vegas, Nashville, and the Sharks twice, I think Roman Yossi is going to lead that entire pool with second period ice time. So whatever I think he'll get, that's my guess. Yep. 
Okay, I'm with you. And if you add the name Roman Yossi, that's your extra, you know, that's your bonus option. Okay. You know how like when you're betting, uh, like playing blackjack or whatever, they have that little bonus bet circle? Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same same thing. I may have overthought this now that I'm considering this, <laughs> but I was feeling froggy and I'm like, we've done so well, many not, different why, things. Why not just why not just put it this way? Between the two games, what will be the highest second period ice time? We will be looking at all four game rosters to find the answer. There you go. And when I say all four, I mean Vegas tomorrow, San Jose tomorrow, San Jose Saturday, Nashville Saturday. Absolutely. Okay. You nailed it. So basically, highest second period ice time this week. We will be finding the answer from all the teams or from any of the teams. It's one pool. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And just to let you know, uh, Jimmy just texted me and he's like, ha, one again. (laughs) Uh, Too funny. So email your answers. HockeyJerk10. Remember, that's all one word, no spaces. HockeyJerk10 at gmail.com. Hit him up with your answers. Again, answers must be submitted before puck drop against Nashville. So, again, I'm even giving you some help. Like, you're going to be able to look at the numbers from the Vegas game and say, you know what, that's that's the guy. He hit it. Mm, I don't. I don't know if I like that only because what's stopping 10 people from just picking the highest number and rolling with it. You know what I mean? Oh, from the Vegas game. Yeah. I almost wonder if, Oh, that's, I almost wonder if the deadline to get it in is the beginning of the second period tomorrow. Better. Okay. There you go. Deadline has been uh, shortened. So yeah, which let's say just for simplistic sake, 2 PM Pacific tomorrow. There you go. Yeah. 2 PM Pacific on Monday the 19th. Would you be surprised if I told you we already have an entry? Hell yeah. So, yeah. Hockey. Again, this is slightly convoluted. I wouldn't be surprised if we only get like five entries, but hey, it is what it is. But here's the thing. You've heard us say ice time enough times. What's 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 stopping you from just throwing a time out there and saying, seeing what happens? Yeah, exactly. Remember, just time on ice in the second period. You can go look at the last game that happened for San Jose and just, you know, find somebody. What about, okay, <laughs> Sharks Oregon making a good point. What's whoever, the goal, whoever the goalie is is going to play 20 minutes in the second period. You know, of, of course we're not, you know, counting <laughs> goalies for Pete's sakes. And the other thing, too, let's be honest, chances are a defenseman is probably the better guess. Yeah, well... Between the Sharks, the Predators, and the Golden Knights, you've got like 25 names to choose from. Yeah, and sh- yeah, Sharks, Oregon, saying so which defenseman then? I mean, chances are. So, any hoodles, there you go. Uh, enjoy. Hopefully that works out for somebody. Uh, speaking of bets, um, brother man, you got 16 games left. Sharks need to average one of every four hitting four goals. How you feeling? Not impossible, but with Couture and Hurdle both being out, I don't like my chances. Yeah, I was going to say those two. As soon as that happened, I went, oh, no tacos. Yeah. I, I'm thinking we might get one more. But maybe, we'll out. maybe two. You know, it would be so sharks to you set the over under at six and a half. It would be so sharks for them to get six. Yeah. So. Another scheduling quirk again. Sharks are hosting Vegas tomorrow off till Saturday versus Nashville. On Twitter, you can follow him at Hockey underscore Jerk. You can follow me at AJ underscore Strong. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave your take in the comment section of the video if you weren't with us live. Keep us commercial free by using Super Chat. Uh, if you listen on Apple Podcasts, bro, we're stuck at 99, so somebody help us out. Let's let's Somebody who listens to this podcast, man, if you haven't left us a solid review, five stars on Apple, please take like, you know, a minute just to... Go over there and do that. We want to try to crack 100. And remember, if you want to be uh, having that access to the Discord server, at Hockey underscore Jerk on Twitter, will uh, well, certainly increase your odds of getting there. <laughs> <laughs> you can find links to our social media, podcast apps, and more included in the show notes. Find everything on TealTownUSA.com. And remember to check out After Dark following every single Sharks game. All right. So... 
we're all wrapped up then. Uh, any any final words? Anything you're looking for? Uh, I, I'm assuming you're not making it in for uh, for the Vegas game. <laughs> No, I will be no. at I will be at this little thing called work. <laughs> oh, you're not getting the president's day off. Nope, that is not one of the holidays that I get. Unfortunately. <sighs> That's some bullshit. Yeah, well. What can you do, right? All right. So what what are you looking forward then over these next two games? Is there anybody in particular you're looking to to go off? You think uh how do you how do you think the sharks I mean I would say Kakinen, despite losing two one-goal games, I would actually kind of push that Kakinen. I I thought looked better over the last week than than Blackwood. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Blackwood got a hell of a lot more goal support. Um, are we just assuming that Blackwood's going to go tomorrow? Yeah, I would think it would be Blackwood. Well, actually. No, I think it. I think it will be Kakinen tomorrow, just because similar to LeBanc, right? You want to boost that trade value as much as you can. True, but do you want Blackwood off for that long? Who cares? Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, right? No, I don't like, disagree. Like, <laughs> like, what does it matter? Like, he knows he understands the assignment. <laughs> Are they going with uh, Hill tomorrow, or the Vegas is just kind of like? Nah, he's too good for the Sharks. <laughs> Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if they play Yuri Patera tomorrow just because that's what Vegas does. They they play their third or fourth goalie against the Sharks, and it doesn't matter because they still win. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. And then um, who's your star of the game? What do you What do you mean? Who, like, who, do, you, who, who, who do you think's the number one star tomorrow? Like if you had to, uh, you know, where, where are your, uh, your betting app? Uh, if it's Vegas, it's going to be Jonathan Marsh or so. If it's the Sharks, it'll probably be William Eklund. Ooh. All right. Dig that. So we'll, uh, we'll see if he's, uh, if he's accurate people next Sunday is our, what is that? The, the last Sunday before we start doing takeovers. I think it is. So we should be here next Sunday at 7 PM Pacific. Thank you so much for watching us. Now here it is, your moment of zen.